<laughs> this is one of those times that it's so rare, but this is one of those times that actually I, I recorded Daily Light once, and it was so bright by the background back here that um, it really wasn't worth keeping. But I started to keep it, and the Lord said, record it over. And I went, ooh, cool. I kind of went, okay, Lord. And he said, tell them, am I my brother's keeper? And so here we go. <laughs> Sometimes God says do over. So I know what's coming. You know, there is a part of every society that likes to take care of the things that God inspires them to do. We started off in our society by thinking that, you know, public education, public welfare, public assistance, public this, public that was always a very good idea because it was started by the Christian doing what Jesus said by saying, who is my brother that I should take care of them? Who is my neighbor that I should clothe them and feed them? Who is the one whom I should care for when they are dying? And who is the one that I should look to when they are cast out or beaten up or on the wayside that I should be a good Samaritan to? In the early days, it was always the priority of the church to reach out and to touch humanity with the compassion that Jesus had for all of the world. Not just for the salvation of the soul, but for the benefit of the body. That we would save by demonstration of our works the faith that we have in God. That we would educate those who needed not just an education in vocation and how to work for a living, but also because if the family failed, that we would provide the education religiously, that they would be able to understand that God has a plan and a purpose and a design for them to fit into. That was the purpose of Christianity, not the government. It was also a purpose not of the government to dictate or to educate or to provide for the living of a person, but rather to provide for the opportunity that if these diverse religious groups would so provide for the people, then they could find, whether they be a Catholic or a Protestant or a Lutheran or a fundamentalist or a Christian or anybody that was doing what Jesus said, they could find education, comfort, consolation. They could find food, shelter. They could find clothing. They could find help in time of need. When a person doesn't want that, when they don't want God to provide, then they choose public. Notice the word public assistance, because it's no longer God involved, not because it's a Christian nation or not, but because God is not the one involved. So don't get all caught up in the government systems when it should be the Christian's avocation of doing what God said to do in the first place. We've been passing the buck on to somebody to govern us, but in reality, our government is of God and the heart. And it should be the church's responsibility to feed, to clothe, to minister, to educate, and to provide health care. Not anyone else's. When we do it with someone else involved, we take God out of the equation. In daily light, he calleth his own sheep by name and leads them out. The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them that I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands, that thy walls are continually before me. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thine arm. The Lord is good, a strong hold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. 
when there are those that claim to know the name of the Lord and prophesy, when they claim the name of the Lord and they go out and do these wonderful works and they do these things that they say God has told them to do, only God can decide in that moment when he sees them face to face whether the benefit of all that they reaped, their wealth, their possessions, their prosperity, their declarations that they have set in this world come to fruit in the next or whether that it was all window dressing and they are actually heading for damnation only God can make that decision we need to be careful that we do what Jesus said and not what we think we should do with the power of God or the name of God or the Holy Spirit without knowing Jesus himself is telling us what to do she had done what she could this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. Whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. If there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to as a man hath, and not according to what he has not. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Go away. Depart in peace. Be ye warned. Be, And you tell them to be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not the things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully, and every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. But ye have done all those things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants where you have done that which is only our duty to do you know when tithing first came out the idea behind tithing wasn't the fact of giving money so that the priest could serve or that they could have some kind of vocation that was not called tithing that was a priestly payment that was given for an offering unto their allotment that they were chosen to have because they didn't inherit the land that is not what is done today Today, the same idea of having meat in my storehouse simply meant that there would be food there so that people, when they were hungry, if they had no way of living, could come to the church and get food. Tithing has taken on a completely distorted meaning nowadays to mean something that it completely has gone against the word of God as far as reality is concerned. It does not involve paying a pastor. Paying a pastor means you have a professional pastor. He is now a worker of what? The people who pay them. So if I go to church and I pay for a pastor, I get what I pay for. But if I go to a church to tithe, I expect poor people, destitute people, needy people, brothers or sisters that are in need of their daily needs would be met by that which I tithe. If you don't know that's what it was there for, then you need to study the Word of God. Because there are people out there that will constantly tell you it's for the sake of the ministry when there is no such thing as ministry of what Jesus said. He simply said, follow me. That's it. Bottom line. Anything after that, you're paying for what you get. And yes, I purchase and I buy. And when I go to a church and I give money, then I expect it as an investment, not in the God, but I expect it as an investment in what men are doing. I expect if I pay for this religious service, then I get a religious service. If I pay for it, I expect to get reciprocity for what I paid for. But if I tithe, there's a difference. If I tithe, then I want to see that it goes to feeding the poor, providing health care, providing for clothes, providing for the needs, meeting those needs. Because meat was never meant to be called the Word of God when it came to tithing, ever.